these folks are here because they believe in the truth. And that's why we are here today. I also want to say uh, thank you to our friends at the NAACP. Garland Pruitt is with us today. Um, and our friends at CARE, Manira Wad, who is one of our speakers today. I want to begin with a quote that I think is, is not only is it comforting, it's very appropriate. This is from Gandhi, who said, When I despair, I remember that all through history, the way of truth and love have always won. There have been tyrants and murderers, and for a time they can seem invincible, but in the end, they always fall. Think of it always. We're here today to talk about the truth because this weekend, Draper Park Christian Church in South Oklahoma City has invited someone to speak whose words often do not reflect the truth. Opinions spoken as fact when in fact there is no fact to much of what Scott Lively has to say. Lively is the author of a couple of books. This is one of the most notorious things I've ever tried to make my way through, The Pink Swastika. This is a book that lays squarely at the feet of gay people the atrocities of the Holocaust. In his newer work, Reclaiming the Rainbow, Scott Lively goes on to express his absolute belief that sexual orientation can and must be changed. When he was invited to Uganda to teach there, and I use that term very, very loosely, it was at that point that he laid claim to the fact that the Rwandan genocide was caused by gay men. His lies do not stop there. They continue unabated, even here in the United States, even here in Oklahoma City. And that's why today we are standing together to stop those lies and talk about the truth. Our first speaker this afternoon is the senior pastor at Church of the Open Arms, Reverend Dr. Kathy McCalley. Thanks to each of you for being here and especially want to welcome Wayne Besson, who has spoken here at Church of the Open Arms before a number of years ago, and it's a joy to have him back with us, and we're thankful for the important work that he's doing. And for each one of you, we have wonderful speakers who are going to be here sharing truth and light and correcting the injustice and lies that are going to be shared in another venue in our city today. What I want to do is give thanks and encouragement to each of you for recognizing that we cannot afford to remain silent and ignore those who perpetrate hate and who perpetuate ignorance and the opposite of the truth and love that I believe the gospel calls us to share. So thanks for being here today, and thanks for doing the work that you are doing. I know that those of us who are in this room are in this for the long haul, and it's a joy to be in such good company. Thank you. Someone said to me this week, what's the big deal? Why are you all so worked up about this? This is nothing but just a religious thing. Friends, I can assure you that it's much more than that. This is not about gay versus straight, about gay versus the church. This isn't liberal versus conservative, Democrat versus Republican. This is about the truth and how the truth impacts all of us in the same ways that untruth does. Our next speaker is representing an important part of our community here in Oklahoma City because he knows all too well the challenges that misinformation can present to an individual and to a community. He's the the executive director of CARE Oklahoma, my friend Manir Awad. (laughs) 
As an American Muslim civil rights advocate, oftentimes we receive complaints from students or parents of students that share stories of their children being held to a expression by classmates or teachers that demonizes, marginalizes, and belittles young Muslim students. Oftentimes, this isn't because of their beliefs as Muslims, but actually the perception of them being part of the other, being different. People like Mr. Lively have devoted their life's work to highlighting the differences amongst us in order to to advance a self-fulfilling agenda to demonize people who he, who he perceives to be different than himself. This, demoniza- this demonization has, has been imposed in many areas of our lives, in our government, in our schools, and in our churches. What Mr. Lively alleges is that a small minority of people have brought everything that is bad to our society, that a small minority of people are plotting to overthrow our country, that a small minority of people are conspiring to overthrow the values of the majority. This paranoia is not new to America, and it's not exclusive to the LGBT community. But in following the tradition of Americans before us, we must be here to oppose this kind of bigotry. Setting aside the obvious ludicrousness of these assumptions. Ask yourself, when was the last time these minority communities organized to spread and impose division and hatred in our communities? Our organizing campaigns are themed around anti-bigotry and social justice, not the imposition of our faith or values on others. So we will continue to organize to ensure that our children Grow up in communities where this bigotry and paranoia is relegated to where it belongs. And that's the fringe of our society, not in the mainstream. Thank you. Thank you, Lanier. We are fortunate in our city that there are so many people who care about things like fairness, equality, and justice. We know that that's true for individuals and communities, and yet oftentimes it's very difficult to stand against what amounts to a river picking up speed. But that's exactly what lies can do. They can transform a people in a very negative way. Someone who knows a great deal about the truth and representing the truth is our next speaker, He is the co-chair of the Central Oklahoma Human Rights Alliance, Nathaniel Batchelder. Thank you. I am Nathaniel Batchelder, and I speak today for the Central Oklahoma Human Rights Alliance. Cora is pleased to be able to respond to the wild and baseless untruths being spread by Scott Lively and others who are infected with a venomous and irrational fear and loathing of gays and lesbians. Scott Lively's assertion in his book, The Pink Triangle, that the Nazi movement in Germany and all their atrocities were invented by homosexuals has been debunked as nonsense by academic historians. His condemnation of LGBT people is 50 years out of date. Fifty years ago, homosexuals were still, homosexuality was still considered a mental illness, and acts of love and intimacy between gays was a crime. Today, gay rights are honored by most corporations and the United States military services, and homophobia is considered a mental illness. The number of families, houses of worship, and religious denominations Embracing the humanity and dignity of gays grows every day as they realize that love and acceptance of their LGBT members is natural and good. Indeed, sexual orientation, whether gay or straight, has been officially declared a normal human characteristic by numerous professional health and psychological associations. 
Scott Lively says homosexuality is a choice. And it is true that bisexuals can choose to relate to men or women. Is it possible that Scott Lively is a deeply conflicted bisexual man covering his conflict with a crazy campaign to fight a characteristic that terrifies him? Whatever his sexual orientation, he did not choose it any more than I did choose mine. The Human Rights Alliance motto is diversity means business. And we encourage dialogue and discussion of gay rights in every family and house of worship because the sickness of homophobia has a cure. And that is extending the love, understanding, and compassion that are the best of humanity to all of God's children. Thank you. Thank you, Batch. Batch just said an important word, I think, and that is dialogue. It's very interesting that Draper Park Christian Church this week posted a rather long press release on their website justifying their invitation to Scott Lively. They said that they felt called by God to invite him to speak and preach there. But clearly they're not interested in a dialogue because they disabled any comments on their website related to this press release. It's unfortunate that that dialogue isn't happening. We hope that it will. The invitation is open now and will continue to be open to have a meaningful dialogue with the people of Draper Park Christian Church and anyone who believes the teachings of Scott Lively. Because it's in that dialogue that we believe that the truth can, will, and must prevail. The pastor of Draper Park Christian Church has a gay brother, someone that he loves, and yet he declares that he will never be in full communion with him because he's gay. Scott Lively has a gay brother and sister and has simplified things saying that because God has taken away his own desire for drugs and alcohol, God can take away the evil desire for same gender love. Well, our next speaker is someone who knows a bit about this. He is perhaps the world's foremost researcher and writer on the so-called ex-gay movement, someone whose work I admire from afar and a person who I admire as a friend. He hasn't been home all month and was supposed to be home right now in Vermont, but changed his schedule to be with us here in Oklahoma City because he believes so strongly that every effort must be taken to stop lies in their tracks. It's my privilege now to present our next speaker, Wayne Besson, the executive director of Truth Wins Out. Uh, Thank you all so much. Uh, It's great to be back at the Church of the Open Arms, and thanks to the Cimarron Alliance and everybody else who is just uh, really on the forefront of fighting for equality. We are here today for three reasons. To elevate unity and love over divisiveness and hate. Put a big spotlight on the lies that are trafficked by Scott Lively. And hold Draper Park Christian Church accountable for bearing false witness by having Scott Lively speak. This topic means a lot to me, not just from a gay perspective. I remember growing up and as a young boy... I used to play basketball at the Jewish Community Center. And one day, a friend and I decided to tour the entire center. We ventured up into this room where a bunch of um, older men were getting massages. And while we were there, we noticed they had, several of them had tattoos from the Holocaust. And I went and I asked my parents about this. And they said yes. They explained to me, what went on and also explained that we had lost people in our own family. And I met relatives who had lost their entire families and had the tattoo from the camps. There's nothing more despicable, in my view, nothing more grotesque than distorting and lying about the Holocaust for political gain like Scott Lively does. There's nothing more repulsive than what he does. 
He gets up each day and says, how can I smear gay and lesbian people? What's the most horrible thing I can say? And he came up with, let's make up a fake history under the guise of religion that says gay people caused the Holocaust. And then he went off to Rwanda, I mean to Uganda rather, and he said the same thing about what happened in Rwanda, the massacre, and tried to blame that on gay people. You know, I've actually, in my family, and met people who've been through the Holocaust and survived the survivors, and it's odd to me because, you know, I don't remember any of them claiming, oh, those terrible gays in the camps perpetrated this on me. That really is just a figment of Scott Lively's wild and vivid imagination. This is not Christianity, as he says. This is insanity. This is not history. This is a hoax. This is not faith but folly. This is not scripture but sophistry of the most despicable kind. Far from being the moral leader he presents himself to be, Scott Lively is a widely discredited individual who cynically twists history for his own benefit. Misconceptions and myths is what he does. And that is why his Abiding Truth Ministries is an official certified hate group from the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now, the criteria for becoming a hate group is not just disagreeing with people, but it's specifically disagreeing and using outright fabrications and lies to express that disagreement. And that's what we're seeing today. In the book, The Pink Swat Sticker, It says in the beginning, the pink swastika will show that there were far more brutality, torture, and murder committed against innocent people by Nazi deviants and homosexuals than ever was against homosexuals. Not only is this not true, he fails to point out all the gay people that were actually killed by the Nazis. What an absolute tragedy and, and, and phony depiction of history, and that is why not a single historian, not a single person who is a scholar, not a single person with a decent education who knows what they're talking about has ever supported Scott Lively's work. So why then is he here, considering nobody of any kind of respect and dignity has ever said what he said is accurate? Does this church not care about accuracy? Do they not care about false witness? Because that's exactly what's happening. They try to betray it as freedom of speech. Well, you know what? That's one of America's greatest gifts, freedom of speech. But with it comes great responsibility. It is a test of character, a signpost of integrity on how you express that speech. And Draper Park has miserably failed. The congregation should be terribly embarrassed by having Scott Lively there. And the church leadership should hang their head in deep shame for what they have brought to this community. Instead of bringing people together, they are ripping them apart. Is really Scott Lively the best they can do? Is that really the message they want to promote? To bring divisiveness and mean-spiritedness and fabricated account of the Holocaust? The Holocaust? Those are the questions that church needs to ask themselves. That is not morality. That is not integrity. What that is... Is simply attacking people unnecessarily and not caring, not caring one bit about the results of such a hate campaign. And I'm honored to be here and standing with everyone who stands for what's good and what's right and treating everybody, every person with dignity and respect. Thank you for having me today, and I'm glad we are standing up to what is nothing short of a menace and a Holocaust provisionist. Thank you. Scott Lively is rewriting history, as Wayne just said. Friends, I contend that we're creating history by standing up against what is wrong advocating for what is right. Our work in LGBT equality involves people from many races 
many cultures, many ethnicities and backgrounds, many religions or no faith tradition at all. And yet we are concerned about moving forward toward a time when, when equality is just that, when people are treated equally in our state. We have quite enough challenges here without importing people like Scott Lively to poison the water, to poison the mine. Imagine what it must be like to be a young gay person in Oklahoma City and knowing that your parents, your neighbors, your friends are going to hear the lies of this man which will demonize you in their own eyes. It's a travesty, it's wrong, and that's why I'm grateful that you're here standing up for what is right. Tomorrow night, in this very space, at exactly the same hour that Scott Lively will be teaching hate, we will be proclaiming the truth in a way that is embracing and encouraging Wayne Besson will be our special featured speaker on a panel tomorrow evening, along with a friend of our community who knows all too well what it's like to suffer at the hands of reparative therapists in the so-called ex-gay movement. Pastor Neil Spurgeon from Expressions Church will be with us on that panel to share a bit of his story and all of the emotional torture that he suffered. And today, the post-traumatic stress disorder that's a result of that. And finally, Mike Kornblit will be with us on our panel. Mike is very passionate about anyone recreating the history of the Holocaust. You see, his parents were Holocaust survivors, and he has written a beautiful love story in his book about their relationship. And so we'll have people from very different perspectives gathered here tomorrow evening to proclaim truth, to advance equality, and to share love. And I think that that is a great calling. Thank you all for being here. Rather than hold everyone up, um, all of the speakers are available for any questions that, uh, that our, our media friends may have. Again, thank you all for being here. We count on each other as we advance equality for African Americans, our Latino friends, Muslim Americans, women, and the LGBT community. Thank you again. Have a good afternoon.